Because sometimes you record stuff and it doesn't always cooperate with you. If you guys have been using technology in your business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But tonight we're going to be talking about my new book, Killer Advertising for Cleaning Businesses. We're going to be talking about some of the key strategies in the main first couple, two, three chapters, some of the things that I think are the most important things to expand upon. And I also want to be here to answer your questions. So as you can see, the plan for tonight is to, let me move my little screen around to expand on a few key ideas. In fact, I can go ahead and turn that off now. <laughs> okay. And let me go ahead and Stop. There we go. So the, the plan for tonight is to expand on a few key ideas that I just mentioned and elaborate on them a little bit more. Make sure that you guys are understanding what some of them are. Also, answer your questions. I like to use live webinar is great to just sit here and just answer questions. Um, instead of just a video, you can watch a video just about anywhere on YouTube or, you know, but here you can actually get my live feedback instead of emailing me and waiting for an email. Sometimes if it's actually on a live webinar like this, I can answer the question better because it's not just me typing or talking to you. It's me showing you, uh, if it's something that I can show you either on another ad or something online. Sometimes that's just a lot better. Also as well, I want to show you some new marketing ideas that I have created uh, here even over the last few weeks that you're going to like. And one of them is directly related to the thing that's going on in everybody's mind. And it's funny because not just the people in the United States are worried about the election coming up in November. But uh, some of my friends that I see from Canada are worried about the election in November. The UK, Australia, all around the world, everybody's worried about this stupid election. So you can bet your last dollar that your clients are going to be hanging on to their dollars at throughout the month of October, I predict. And we need to be prepared for that by having some very, one, one have, having special offers. I mean, that's sort of the thing that is just kind of the given. And not just a five rooms for $99 or $69, give away the farm, but a unique offer. But even better, an offer that goes along with the conversation going in, on in their mind, which is the election, right? And we're going to be talking about that. And the neat thing about this is you're going to even see sort of the thought process of how that happens because we know we were uh, if you've been in business for more than four years and you were here for the last election or four years before that or four years before that which i have been i know that during every election especially the the more dirty elections you're going to have a slowdown in your in the amount of people that are actually calling you because everybody's on standstill they're they're buying gold and silver they're not buying the uh, cleaning right so you need to have some stuff set to be able to make special offers for your clients and to be able to um, really, you know, counteract that. So we're going to be talking about that and even show you the mindset that I've got for that. So if you guys have questions, by all means, you can type them in at any time in the question area, in the Q&A area. I think it's just called Darn it, I don't even remember what it's called, but it's called comment or question on your end because I've got a different panel for I've, that I've got. But you should be able to see that either on me Messenger or question. I'll get both of those. So uh, if you've got a question, you won't interrupt me. You can ask it at any time. I'll try to get to everybody's questions tonight. I can't guarantee that I will, though. So if you have a question, the earlier that you ask it, the better. Just keep in mind, I may not see it as soon as you ask it. I may see it two or three or five or ten minutes after you ask it. So make sure that you ask it in a complete sentence related to, uh, right, it's called chat. Exactly. Good. Thank you, Don. <laughs> so uh, it's called the chat area. So, but I, will, I may or may not see it like I saw Don's as soon as he asked it, but I may or may not be looking at the chat area as soon as you actually ask it. So make sure that how you ask it pertains to the whole sentence and you didn't leave out part of it. So where I'm confused if I answer the question or look at it later on down the road 10 minutes later okay so here we go we're going to uh go over and again i'm going to expand on a few of the things that we've talked about inside of the book now the first thing that i think is really important is talking about budgeting for your marketing and this is something that i see a lot of cleaners go wrong with either spending too much or not enough so how much should you spend on your marketing 
10%. That's a very good, and this is, that's vague. I'm not saying that's how much you should spend. That's a very vague number that most marketing, advertising, and business consultants are going to tell you. Not even just for a cleaning business, but for a business in general. I know of guys, and two, it's going to vary depending on how long you've been in business, how much you're currently wanting to grow. I know guys that spend 1% or 2% of their budget on marketing, right? Now, the thing is, if you spend anything on business cards or a website or anything like that, you're spending some money on marketing. So everybody should be spending something on marketing, even if you're not wanting to grow. If you're wanting to grow, it's really permissible to spend 15 to 20%. Now, the key to all of that is you also, especially if you're spending upwards of 15 to 20%, you need to really know what your numbers are. Meaning you need to know how much profit you're making, and you know that's a whole nother ball game that we're not really going to talk about right now. But just keep that in mind when I'm when I'm giving you that number. But normally for a cleaning business, spending 10% if your prices are decent, anyway, and they're not too low priced, you're going to be still making some profit as long as you're actually getting <laughs> as long as you're actually getting return on the advertising that you're spending. So that's really kind of the next thing. The reality to that though is that most cleaners either don't spend enough because they're scared of the past errors that they've made or they are uh, spending too much and they're not getting any results. Frankly, if you're spending if you're spending $1000 a month and you're not getting at least $3000 in business directly, not just repeat business, but directly from that advertising, you're not really getting the best results and you need to be trying other things until you can get at least a 3 to 1 return. That's what that would be. You spend $1000, you get $3000 in business, right? Um and and for some of you guys $1000 is way too much to spend. For some of you guys $1000 is nowhere near enough. That's where I that's why you go by that 10% projected sales. Now, for some of you new guys, the, the question that I usually get and I'll go ahead and answer this. Somebody might have even asked it. I didn't even check, but the question is always um, well, what if I'm new in business? Then what? Well, if you're new in business, uh, you need to project how much you might be getting in sales. For $100,000, maybe you might want to shoot for for the first year. That's reasonable. Maybe you can uh, also look at getting, uh, spending, you know, $8,000, $10,000 a year, maybe something like that. So $1,000 a month is is reasonable or a little less than a thousand dollars a month, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars a month is reasonable if you're a brand new business. Now, of course, that's provided you've got some money saved up somewhere and or a credit card. I know that when I first got in business, that's pretty much what I did. I was, I was living off credit cards the first year that I started my business. I, uh, I think I had money for the used van that I bought. I went down and spent about ten k on a truck mount, brand new truck mount. At that time, you could get a truck mount for ten thousand. And uh, boom, I put it on my credit card. And then after that, I just was paying for my advertising, you know, for the first several months because you got to get that repeat business built up. But the, the, the reality, though, that to just understand from this point is a lot of cleaners are scared to advertise. And that may be you. And, and I understand that because either you didn't get a good return and or you just think that, you know, you're, you're comfortable with the amount of business that you're getting. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, but realize that 10% is about what you should be spending, give or take, right? 10% of your projected sales. So, um, if you're doing $200,000 a year, spending $20,000 a year, isn't really all that, you know, much really for, for spending money on advertising. Now the, the second principle that I really wanted to go over with you guys right now is keeping clients, so the, the big thing to think about is, do your clients remember you? Do they, do they know who you are? Uh, do they ever ask your company name when you write a check? I was talking with uh, one of my clients a few weeks ago. He came by and I had lunch with him in my city. And uh, he said, well, I know my clients don't remember who I am because they, a lot of the times, maybe not every time, but often they'll, they'll ask, who do I make this check out to? If you ever get that question, your clients aren't just magically remembering your company name. If they ever call you and say, I think I used you last time, they don't just remember your company name. And the funny thing is, is they even ask us these questions and we mail to them all the time too. Granted, it's going to cut that factor down of them not remembering you. But can you imagine if you're not mailing to them, if you're not marketing back to them properly, are they really ever going to remember your company name? No way. You, you can't go out and clean for somebody 
and then expect that a year later they're just going to remember who you are. Okay, this is a, a big failure I see in a lot of cleaning companies, and or they think that it's going to be a situation of they're going to um, go back and, and find the bottle of spot remover. And granted, those are great. I'm not down. I recommend highly spot remover bottles and magnets. Don't bank all of your business on those, though. Right. Spot remover bottles get emptied and thrown in the garbage. They get lost. Magnets get tossed in the garbage, thrown away under the refrigerator, all sorts of crazy things. Don't leave it to those, right? Email, same thing. Don't leave it to email. So the reality is, you know, one of the realities to this that I always get as well is, well, I email my clients or I text my clients. Well, how many of your clients unsubscribe to your email newsletter? A lot of them. How many, uh, you know, unsubscribe to your text? Or how many really want to get bothered by you for texts? Or what if they get a new cell phone number? Well, you're, you lost a client. Don't leave it to that, guys. And then, too, they really, uh, how many times, too, would it be where if you just texted them six months or a year later after the clinics, you don't want to text them often, and they didn't unsubscribe, and they're like, who the heck is this? Who's texting me? And they get mad, and they unsubscribe from your text list, or they just blow you off as a spam marketer. That happens. That's that's the brutal reality. So, and again, none of those things are bad. Email marketing's great. Please don't get me wrong. It's not something you need to bank your entire business on. It costs literally, and I, this isn't a figure that I made up. I this is one of the first things I ever learned in advertising school and college. It costs at least five times more money in advertising and marketing to gain a new client than it does to keep an existing client. In the cleaning business, guys, that is even more true. Please let that ring true in your ears. The, all of the cleaning companies that I know that are the most successful market to their current clients in not just email marketing, but postcards and newsletters. And maybe, I don't even know that all of them do text because that's still sort of an iffy kind of a thing that is a little bit touchy on the subject of a lot of people. But, but definitely email marketing and physical mail through the mail. One of the only ways you can for sure get a hold of your client again is through the mail. So keep that in mind. Um, coincidentally, okay, well, we'll talk about that in just a minute, Steve. Yeah. So, st yeah, well, Steve's just mentioning that he's, he's texting his clients and he's wondering if that's the best thing to do. Um, it, it's not a bad thing to do. And if and the big thing that I would recommend for that is whenever you go in to do business with your client and they actually say, you know, and you, and you say, by the way, we can send out text reminders. If they're all, if they're all down with that and they want you to do that, absolutely text them. But if they're hesitant or, eh, I don't know, don't even put them on your text list. You know, same thing with email. We, if you want to, we can put you on our email newsletter list and send you reminders. If they're not at all down with that, then don't even take their email address, right? Why? Well, because they're going to unsubscribe anyway, and they're not going to pay attention to it anyway, and they might even get mad at you if you start mailing them too much. So, and how many times do you ask a client, can we have your email address, and they tell you no? For us, well, 20% of the time, 25% of the time, right? 75% of the time they will, but a good part of the time they will not. So, yeah, and Don's even mentioning that uh, it costs 10 times more <laughs> to gain a new client. Yeah, uh, at least five times more. I can't tell you guys how much import, how important this is in the cleaning business, though. We are here, and we rely on repeat clients more than anything else, guys. That's super important to understand, right? So... It's very, I mean, some of the best money that you can spend is mailing and marketing to your past clients. The way we do it and the way I do it for, for my uh, coaching members is we send these newsletter postcards is a lot of times what I like to send. And it costs, depending on the size that we're sending and how many you're sending out, really. So there's variables to that. But on average, if you're sending out about 1,000, 1,500, something like that, which is about an average carpet cleaning, uh, cleaning company client list, um, you're going to probably be spending in the neighborhood of 25 cents for postage, maybe 5, 10 cents for the postcard, right? So 30 cents if you want somebody else to label it. You know, we sometimes have a printer that can label it for you. And it's like another, uh, like a flat $90 fee. So you're looking at somewhere you know, maybe 40 cents ish, you know, maybe a little bit less depending on how many that you're doing. But, you know, for the whole lock, stock and barrel 
stamp labeled, you know, and you do that six times through the year, right? So 40 cents times six, $2.40 to market back to the person that's keeping you in business and giving you referrals. Oh, you know, come on. Okay. So ask yourself honestly, and these are good, important questions to think about. Um, are you really getting the sales that you want in your business? And, and the, these are just like brutal reality kind of checks that I want you guys to be thinking about right now. Um, do you know why you're not getting the sales that you want? Because chances are, a lot of the times, you're, you know, even a successful business wants to wants to get more sales. So are you getting the sales? Well, the answer to that is probably a rhetorical no. Do you want, do you know why you're not getting the sales that you want? Right? You have to think about that. Do you know why? And, and if so, why not? You need to write that down. You need to be thinking about that, not just thinking about it, but writing it down. Now, here's a real critical question. What do you need to do now? And really, some of the answer to that, what do you need to do now, is your marketing plan and the plan that you're going to set for getting new business. What is it that you need to do to get new business? This is a question that if you guys are needing new business, in fact, I recommend that you write that down on an index card, put that in your van, or if your technicians are there, they're going to think that's weird, put it somewhere else in your office or on your mirror in your bathroom. But this is a question that you need to ponder so that that can help you actually get that marketing plan down. That's the kind of stuff that I used to do and even still do with certain things on occasion. What do I need to do now to to fill in the blank, right? That's going to get your mind jogging about the things that you need to do, how to fill in the blank for that plan of what you need to do. You know that you're not getting what you need. Uh, do you do you know why? Think about that and even write down some of those answers. But the better things is what do you need to do to get there? And you need to write that down. That's your marketing plan or your plan to get actually where you want to go. So let's talk a little bit about doing that. I mean, doing that marketing and getting that done. And really the thing to start from is your target prospect. Here's one of the things that I wouldn't say hate because it, by the way, if you've ever emailed me asking me this, I don't, I don't hate you. I just hate this question because it frustrates me because it, it just lets me know that maybe some people aren't hearing what I'm saying when I talk about this stuff. But uh, I, I hate to get emails from from guys. Not that I, I mean I like answering them, but it's just you know it, it's it's fine. But so if you've asked me this question again, don't be don't be offended. But an email that I get a lot of the times, or a question even from from a client on the phone or on a webinar or whatever, is well, John, can you look over this ad and check this headline out, or what kind of a headline do you think I should have for this ad, or or what do you think I should say here? And I'm just like, you're, you're doing your marketing all wrong. That is not where you start. If you're sitting there with an ad going, what kind of headline should I do here? Or what kind of an offer? And you're totally starting from scratch. Your advertising is totally backwards, right? And, and from backwards from the way that I teach, backwards from the way that real advertising is taught, and backwards from really a real advertising strategy. The better way to design advertising, and I'm going to show you a great example of this in just a second, is starting from the thinking about who is your target prospect? Who is that person? Are they, how old are they? Are they a male or, the, or a female? How much is their household income? Where do they live? What neighborhoods do they live in? How often do they clean? You need to know all of this stuff. You need to have that person in your mind about who your ideal target is. And then you need to be thinking about what is the key point that I want to make in the ad? See, a lot of the times when they email me or ask me, hey, what should I do for this headline? There's no key point at all. It's the Bubba ad with, uh, hey, we do it all. One call cleans it all. Carpet cleaning, commercial, residential, lowest prices in town. We beat them all. Terrible marketing. And if you're coming at it from the point of, hey, what kind of a headline should I use without any other background about what's going on with that ad you haven't done any homework and thought about your target prospect you also haven't thought about your key point you haven't thought about what the main thing is that you want to say because that headline usually has something to do with that main thing that you want to say so what's the one single key point that i want him or her to remember from all of this from that entire ad if they walk away with one thing what's the one thing that i want them to know after you get those two questions, you're going to go and uh, the answer to those two things, you're going to go and ask yourself a bigger question that's related to those two questions. What is the best media 
to reach my target prospect, and you've already defined that person, right, and written that down with my key point. You've already written down that main key point that you want to get to them, okay? So again, who is my target prospect? Exactly who they are. You've got a clear picture. What is my key point? My one single key point that I want him or her to remember after they've seen either my ad or my marketing message, my email, my whatever that you're doing, right? So what is the, then you, then you think about the media. Then you think about, and at this point, you haven't even thought about a headline yet, really. You're thinking about the media and you're thinking about what media should I use to reach my target prospect with that key point? Because sometimes, depending on what the key point is, your media could change. Depending on who the target prospect is, your media could change. Super important to think about it this way. And so, then you need to be brainstorming and not just even have one media in mind, but brainstorming thinking, well, what would be the best media for this? You know, again, what the other question that I get, the second most frustrating question is, should I advertise in the yellow pages or should I advertise on Yelp or should I advertise on, I always get some, some strange question about some brand new directory because somebody called them on the phone and, you know, and, and I've been a victim of this too before, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say that this is even beyond any of us because it's not, you know, because I've fallen victim to this. I, I bought phone book covers one year for crying out loud because this one guy called me and said that it was the best thing since sliced bread. He's going to put them out everywhere. I ended up ended up being a scam. By the way, almost every time I ever ask, if somebody calls you and I and, and you buy it, almost all the time it's something that you shouldn't have done. <laughs> I can't say that for every single case, but if somebody calls you out of the clear blue that's a telemarketer and you buy it, it's almost always a bad idea, right? And phone book covers was, was one of my key lessons that I learned and lost some money off of. But so so you're thinking, you know, at this point, what type of media should I use? So you thought, well, I want to reach and this is how I even came up with a good neighborhood advertising campaign, that whole concept, this exact strategy. I thought, I want to reach um, Mrs. Jones, she lives over here on Elm Street in Scenic Hills neighborhood. It's a nice golf course neighborhood near my shop. And it's close to my shop, so this is ideal. And uh, I want to be able to clean for her and all of her neighbors. That would be sweet. They've all got big houses. They all have money because they live in a golf course. And uh, they're all really close to my shop, so we can get there in 5-10 minutes. This is perfect. These are the people that I want to clean for. Well, now I start thinking, what's the best media to reach Mrs. Jones with the idea that I want to be the neighborhood cleaner. And, geez, what comes out on top is, well, heck, uh, direct mail. You know? I mean, by far, direct mail. What else maybe comes up with that that we actually do on occasion but not nearly as often? Um, well, we, uh, Google AdWords. Nowadays, you can actually do a Google AdWords campaign tailored toward a specific area of town. Well, we do that in in conjunction. Um, we, we've never done this, but we've thought about you know doing this on a couple of occasions, getting a billboard in that area with that same type of message backing up the fact that you are the neighborhood cleaner. Bang! There now you have a marketing plan, a basic marketing plan for a, a good, solid neighborhood advertising campaign. And now we also know our ads aren't gonna. Well, they still could stink, but you still have to go through and come up, and that's something later that we'll talk about with headlines and and things like that. But uh, the the question is at that point, are you you have the right media, right? And now you also know you have a backbone of the headlines that you might use are going to be associated with things like, well, we're the neighborhood cleaning company, right? Because that was the main point. That was the key point. We're the neighborhood cleaning company. That's probably what the billboard would say. That's probably what some of the headlines or at least one of the main things and a lot of the ads that we've done for direct mail would say. Since we're your neighborhood cleaning company, we want to give you the special offer. And since you're our neighbor, you know, we always throw the word neighbor in there to let them know that they're, they're our neighbor because that's a big part of the whole campaign because it makes sense because it's all in the plan. You guys getting this? You understanding what I'm talking about and how this works together? Matt says yes. Good. Mark says yes. You're good. Well, all right, guys. So, okay. So. I want to show you a good example that we're going to take some questions here in just a minute. By the way, again, if you guys have specific questions, I saw a couple of them coming in, but if you guys have other specific questions, go ahead and put those in now related to anything to do with advertising, marketing, that type of thing. But I want to show you some examples of th some things that I've even been working on based on that same type of strategy idea. 
and things that I've developed even in, over the last couple of weeks, right? Um, things that uh, some of the things that my ad club members haven't even seen yet. Okay, so like I've already talked about a little bit, kind of mentioned at the beginning of the webinar and on the uh, couple of live videos that I did on Facebook, based on past election years, because I've been in business for right at, not quite, actually it's gonna, it's almost 20 years. I've got, uh, so basically right out 20 years. I've, I've got, uh, I've seen several elections come and go. And I know that right before an election, it gets slow in October. It gets very slow in October. Sometimes even the beginning of, or the end of September, eh, we're still fairly busy, but October, especially two, three weeks out before the election, oh my gosh, right? Nobody is thinking about hiring a cleaning company. They're worried about all the stuff going on uh, on the television, on the internet, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, you know, all of this is going to be happening. So we need to do something, and what I started thinking is we really need to do something to counteract that. So what in the world can I do? So the thing that I, I really sat down and I said, well, I've got a problem. I know that we're going to be getting slow, so I need to do something to counteract that. So who is my target prospect? Well, high-end homeowners in uh, the 32514 zip code, high-end homeowners that are my past clients. I mean, my past clients are always my target prospect, guys, and they should be yours too. Your past clients are your gold mine. They should be one of the first people that you talk to, right? So how do I counteract that? Well, um, and my key point needs to be, well, uh, the election's here, and let's go ahead and throw that out on the table. The election's here, but you shouldn't skip getting carpet cleaning. Really was my key point. Even the, the Carpet cleaning, tile cleaning, floor cleaning, upholster cleaning. You shouldn't skip getting cleaning done just because the election's here. In fact, we've got special offers, that's that was my key point in a one sentence nutshell. Okay, and based on that, I said, well, what are the best media to reach those people with? Well, uh, direct mail is a great one. Facebook is a great one. Google AdWords is a great one. Um, we may even do a uh, we'll definitely do a client postcard. We'll also do probably an EDDM every door direct mail neighborhood newsletter. And so after that, I've got a very clear strategy for my advertising. Now I get to be creative as long as my creativity falls within that strategy, okay? That's uh, that's really the way an advertising agency should work. Now keep in mind, I'm on, under no delusions of grandeur that advertising agencies do what they're supposed to do all the time with their advertising. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying that sometimes if they do it right, it can actually work right for the benefit of the company that they're advertising for. So track with me with this, okay? Again, Key point is, or my, my target client, high-end homeowner that is in at least an $80,000 a year income in the 32514 zip code, uh, and or my, tar my past clients that have already used me. Those are really my target clients with this. What is the key point that I, and it's usually a female, by the way, uh, over the age of 30 years old. What is the key point that I want to get to them? The election's coming, but don't neglect your carpet. And we have special offers to entice you to get cleaning done. That's my that's my key point. What are the best media? Direct mail, Google AdWords, Facebook. So now, well, what do I do? When I sit down and I come up with, I start brainstorming some media. I start brainstorming some ideas for things. And I thought, well, geez. Actually, it was somebody on my cleaning marketing board, too. I was sort of thinking along that lines of getting some type of a campaign. And somebody mentioned the slogan of Make America Clean Again. And uh, I wonder if Michael's even on here right now, but I told him I'd give him a copy of the postcard. So make America clean again. And uh, so I had this artwork done up by a friend and uh, decided to make this. This is sort of even still in mock mode. It's not even the completely set. I may change it around or do something else to spruce it up. But, you know, the the headline make America clean again. And it's got a picture that I had made up, uh, drawn up of a guy eating potato chips, getting the carpet all filthy dirty. He's doing nothing but sitting there watching TV and the Trump-Clinton debate is on and, uh, you know, he's sitting there just going, oh boy, this is great. And he's making a mess. The dog's sitting there going, oh my gosh, looking up at the guy. Now we've got a little story over here. 
politics is a dirty business. You stay glued to the television to see who's winning in the polls. While you're enthralled with watching all the mudslinging commercials and debates, you make a terrible mess with spilling drinks, dropping crumbs, and forgetting to let the dog outside. Making America clean starts with making your home clean. And then the other side, of course, will have some special offers again. This is just a, I haven't even fully got this, the whole concept mocked up. And that's that's where I've gotten to at this point. But I just wanted to show you guys that. I mean, because that's honest to God, the whole process of how something like this comes up, where you realize you've got a problem, you realize that you need to make a key point about something in particular, and then you make an ad or a campaign or a offer or, or something to solve that problem or to go through and make your key point known to your public, to the target prospect. And it works that way and it works well if you do it that way. So, you know, and this is, by the way, again, this isn't even necessarily, probably isn't the full completely set postcard. I'm going to probably design it better, do something else with it, but I just wanted to put this up here to show you guys. But this is something, too, that we're going to take this entire same concept, put it not only on a client postcard, but also in a client newsletter, also in an email newsletter, also in a, a Facebook ad, also in, and which you know could go viral because it's kind of a neat picture, make America clean again, you know, that type of thing. Also in a, uh, could even put it in a video, probably put it, on in you know I mentioned email newsletter probably in an every door direct mail piece to a neighborhood you know that type of thing so we're going to use that all around for all of that you know starting in October because that's when everybody's going to be thinking about this is going to be the conversation going on in people's minds we're going to go ahead and and join that um, and by the way all of the all of you guys yeah Scott's asking are we going to get this in the ad club yes if you're part of my ad club you're going to get this entire campaign you're going to get access to this picture and only if you're in the ad club you'll you, you'll get access to that by the way um but but yeah you, you'll have all of that and we're gonna have that entire campaign probably come out next week so that'll be all set for everybody that's in the ad club um but but so that just wanted to show you that that's sort of the whole you know grommet of how that works and how that kind of comes into play and again um it's still in the works but it's something that's gonna solve the problem that i had you know not not being slow in in October we need to do something to counteract that so here's another problem and another another thing that we had was we're getting some reviews for our cleaning company but we really aren't getting reviews from people that are just you know we're telling we're asking people for reviews and they're thrilled but they're not giving us reviews well what do we do and so we're we're pondering you know well who's our target prospect well our current clients what's the message that we want to give them that we we'd like to get a review from them and how are we going to do that so we came up with this business card it's actually just a standard size you know three and a half long two inch tall business card just like everybody's small business card and um it's just something that just says you know how was your cleaning we'd like to know and then on the other side it's got our phone number because of course we might sometimes assume that this is the only thing that they're actually going to keep from us and it says please review us online and just give us a review on our review site. I talked about this in our webinar last the other night for the ad club, if you were on this. And we went ahead and got the, and the, I'll, I guess I'll briefly explain this because it's a little bit confusing if you don't know. But the other thing that we figured out is even giving them a website to go to. If it's your long, oh, for crying out loud, if you want to send them to your Google page, they're never going to find it, right? They can't type in all that stuff. So what do you do? You buy a domain name that's your company with reviews at the end, .com, and something that's simple to, to read, simple to type in, that's kind of long, but at least it's shorter than all of the other stuff, and people are used to typing in .com stuff without slashes, and, and it's easier than some things that it could be. So basically, they uh, you know they get this, and, and they type this in, and then when they type this website in that we bought, this domain name for like $10, they go directly to a review page or a review site that we've actually got up to where they, in fact, you can type that in if you want to, um, and uh, they'll go directly to this review page, and then they'll have the option to give us a review. If it's a good review, it'll allow them to go to Facebook or Google to put a review there. If it's a bad review, it'll just let us know that 
they're getting they they gave a bad review so that we can contact them and see how we can make things right with them um so that sort of alleviates the problem of if somebody's giving us a bad review how do we catch that well this is a great way to do it um also if it's a great and to get more reviews it sort of facilitates them it definitely facilitates them through that process because they type this in and it goes directly to our special review page that sorts out after they give us that review based on what they said where we're going to send them from there. We're going to send them to directly to just say thanks, and now we get an email saying, hey, they don't like what we did for them, so that we can catch them and, and make things right, or, or do they go to a place where they automatically go to their Google account and they can give us a Google review, or they automatically go to their Facebook account and they can give us a Facebook review, you know, both of those. So we've got that set, you know, as well in a card to be able to do that. And... Um, you know, this is something that uh, we we actually just ordered the cards, but theoretically, this is something that should work really, really good to be able to get reviews. But that's how that's how you get your your problem solved with marketing with advertising. And um, yes, yeah, Scott, this is something that is available even now already in the Ad Club site. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see here. And then, uh, by the way, if anybody, a couple of you uh, have asked about the coaching club the if you want i'm not going to take time to really talk about that much just a a brief commercial just a brief mention but if you go to hitmanadvertising.com slash coaching let me type that in you guys can get all the information that you need on that perfect and then to if anybody has any other questions, you can just shoot me an email specifically. So now I want to answer, well, first, let's, let me just answer all the questions that you guys have got. Uh, I saw several coming in, so I was able to see some of them while I was talking. I couldn't see all of them, but now let's see here. Don's mentioning that he started his business in 1986. So, okay, Mark is asking about the referral cards at what point when do we give those and who do we give those out to that's a good question talking about these cards right here what we do with these cards is we give these out at the end of every job what we do is i've given uh well we actually just ordered the cards we haven't got them in yet probably get them in in the next day or two um but I'm going to give a written script. By the way, I'm a big believer in giving written scripts to technicians. And even if you're doing it yourself, you really kind of need to get a written script. And if you're going to ever have a technician or anticipate having one, write the script down and give it to the technician and practice that script with him. That's super important. Um, so the script is something to the effect of, first, a reason why. I, you know, there, There's a book called Reason Why Advertising that I read a long time ago that I love that really just says people are going to respond a whole lot better if you give them a reason why you're doing something. Why are you giving that special offer? Why are you, and we're going to probably tell them that with that, uh, with the election campaign. We're going to say, well, usually people are just sitting in front of their TV and not getting cleaning done. That's why we want to give you this special offer. Makes perfect sense, goes along with the conversation going on in their mind, right? Well, for this, we, we give them the card and we go, well, Mrs. Jones, um, we're trying to get more reviews on Facebook and Google. Can you help us out? And we ask them if they can help us out. Because if we can get more reviews, we give them that reason why, it helps us out. We get more new clients that see us and we get more exposure and sometimes we even rank better in the search engine. So we'd really appreciate it. You know, if you were happy with what we did for you here, if you're not, let me know and how we can make you happy. But if you were happy, we'd sure love if you could go to this site and we flip the card over and we give it to them and tell them they can go there and give us a review. Just a quick little, you know, nothing to, you know, we're not going to try to sit them down and walk them through the process unless they want us to. If they seem like they want us to, then we will. But just something short, quick, and simple. Um, you know, and if you just do it just that simple, not everybody's still going to give you a review, but I'd say a good, a good, more number than you're getting now will. And all this really costs, I think we're getting these for like $12 or something. <laughs> you know, and, uh, for, for these cards for like a thousand of them, like 12 bucks. And, uh, all it takes is 12 bucks and, you know, getting that script and spending an extra, literally probably a minute explaining to your client and handing it to them. I would venture to say that you can double the number of reviews that you've gotten, right? Get better feedback and, Go in and maybe get better ranking on the internet, at least in the Google local area for sure. Getting more reviews undoubtedly helps that. Um, 
Oh, Trish is asking, looking at your review page, how can you send reviews on to Google? Well, what I've got, in fact, go to this link. I don't know if David Hebert's actually on here right now, because if he is, he could give his link. He's actually got some software that he's got that, that'll do this, but go to premiumcarpetcarereviews.com. What'll happen is um, you'll go in and, and, and be able to, to give a review and if it's a good review, it'll prompt you to go through to Facebook. If it's not a good review, we'll get an email just saying thanks for your feedback. And then we'll get an email saying that this person's not happy and we'll be able to contact them. Right? You don't have, I'm not saying go give me a review. I'm just saying go in and check it out and act like you're giving your, me your review, that type of thing. If you just wanted to see how that works. But this is an auto forwarded link. Now, the question is though, how can you send them to review you on Google? Um, yeah, you can. Here's what you would do. And that's a little bit maybe more complicated because we talked about this in detail the other night. But um, you're going to want to get your Google re- review page. Like um, Trisha or somebody, what's the name of your carpet cleaning business? Or just anybody. Type in the name and I'll show you how to do that specifically. Complete care system. And what city is that in? Let me see if that'll even. Is this you in Trinity, Florida? Okay, good. I'm in Florida. So this is you right here. So what you want to do is you're going to click on write a review. Oh, you know what? There's a better place. That's right. I've forgotten. Instead of the old-fashioned way, there is a new fangled way to do this. I'll give you guys this link. Since you guys hung out with me on this webinar, I want to give you this link. This is the coolest way to do it instead of the old way. Let's do it the new way. Okay, go to this link, and uh, you're going to put in your company information here. Put in, let's see, Complete Care Systems Trinity, Florida, and then click that. This is you right here, I would think, and then you've got your information right here. You can, uh, you can get the QR code if you want to. I even thought about putting the QR code on my card. Um, I didn't for right now, mostly because hardly anybody uses QR codes, but you can put the QR code on there or on another ad if you want, if you wanted to go that route. Um, but putting, uh, you know, what I've done again, the other way that you could do this, is you can get this, you copy this link right here and let's see, this is, this is the best way to do it. If, if they're logged in or not, and what happens is you put this in and they're going to automatically go to this. And this is going to flash up, and you're already logged in. So five stars are going to already show up, and they're going to just be able to leave the review just by putting in that link. Now, here's the bad thing. Did you see how long that link is? Nobody's going to remember that. Now, you can put that into an email, but even then, sometimes that link, because that's so long, it can get broken in an email. So can you depend on this huge link? No. And Google knows that, and they really don't even sort of want you to do this all that much. They kind of want reviews to be more natural. So we're kind of manipulating the system a little bit in reality. But um, so let's discard the review. Um, But so what you do instead of putting this big old link in here is you go to GoDaddy or I can't even remember what the other one, but there's another really good, maybe even potentially better place to buy a domain name. Go, go somewhere and buy. Yeah, you can go to Bitly as well, but Bitly is going to be too weird. I remember the first time I ever typed in a Bitly address, I went, what is this address? B-I-T dot L-Y. That's, what's L-Y? And it looks like spam, right? And so I was very hesitant. I don't even remember if I did it the first time I saw it. So I would hesitate to do that. But if you type it in, and it, and you could put this whole big link, and if you buy something like CompleteCareSystemsReviews.com at GoDaddy for ten bucks, you can have that forwarded directly to this, to where they type in CompleteCareSystems.com, and then they go directly to this, and all that costs you is ten dollars a year. Looks more professional, and more people are going to be inclined to type it in. So I guarantee you, somebody typing in, if you were to put that in a business card, bit.ly slash blah blah blah, because it has to be slash something after that. You could probably put slash Complete Care Systems. It would get lost in translation. I don't know. It may work. But for the $10 of buying the, the domain name, that could work too. Right. But uh, but go ahead and make sure you got this link copied. So that, that's a good thing to put down there. 
You're very welcome. So, um, oh, and what else were we just talking about right before that? Did I finish answering Matt's question? Um, yeah, about the cards I did. That's just, you just give a quick script. Exactly. Oh, Steve saying you wanted to see the uh, Make America Clean Again card. Sure, it's right here. Uh, yeah, basically, like I said, this isn't even the necessarily, this is just kind of the first mock-up that I've got in the next few days. I'm going to work on getting this complete and done. But in a nutshell, it's something that's going to catch people's attention. Sort of a, you know, and, and if you notice, I purposefully made this to where it wasn't slanted toward Clinton or Trump or it's just a general this guy's having a great time just enthralled in the election doesn't care about his carpet doesn't care about his dog doesn't care about anything else in the world but eating potato chips and making a mess and looking at Clinton the, you know the slob that is just sitting there watching the you know the uh, the debates and whatever else is going on but yeah we'll have more of that so um, all right, guys. Well, what other questions do we have? Let's see here. Oh, Pete's asking about doing every door direct mail that I had talked about the neighborhood marketing. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have much time to really go totally into that. But in a nutshell, that requires a large postcard, at least six and a half by nine is usually the size bare minimum that you're going to want to send up to. I think it's even. 12 by 14. It doesn't have to be a postcard, but it has to. It can't be a thin sheet of paper, though. It can't be a flyer. It's got to be something either a, a folded three time flyer or a postcard. A postcard is the most common thing. Um, so it's normally, for our purposes, a postcard, and it's normally a big postcard. Um, it's done through the United States Postal System. Normally, it's 17.5 cents per mailer. It can be a little bit less if you have a bulk mail permit for that, but 17.5 cents is the normal. Um, Oh, what is it? If you do have a bulk mail permit, I think it's 16.75, right? And so you basically just need to make sure they have their special insignia on it. Be sending out to an entire mail route, which is normally at least, least usually 200 people, I think is maybe the smallest mail route. Sometimes on average, they're about 300, 400, but you have to send at least the entire mail route. You can't pick part of it. Um, how big is the mail route? Well, it depends really they vary they're anywhere from like i mentioned 200 to as much as the biggest ones usually maybe 1100 1200 might depend on the city or how they just happen to work it out but that's how where the the mailman actually goes you know through a, through a certain route um but yeah that's it and then you just mail the large postcard i recommend that you do it in a series of three you know in other words you send one now with a good offer, and when I say good offer, remember, I don't mean just five rooms for $69. I mean something unique. And usually, we didn't talk about offers much tonight, but usually it's in the neighborhood of giving away something free or extra or something different. Something that Joe Blow, the cleaner, is not offering. Because he is offering five rooms for $59 and $69, because almost every city has that and has that problem. Um, so you don't want to do what he's doing. You want to do something completely different. But But yeah, that's basically it in a nutshell. And then, oh, Steve, how do you do neighborhood marketing on Google AdWords? That's actually something that I've talked about a lot in my Google AdWords course. Um, basically, when you go in to do AdWords, you have the option for geo-targeting. And it's under the campaign level when you go in to do the Google AdWords campaign. It's under the campaign level. And uh, under geo-targeting, you're going to choose the area that you want to target. So instead of targeting like a whole city, target a specific zip code. Or even in some cases, this isn't even all the time, but some cases you can target a specific part of a zip code and even go maybe not always just an entire one neighborhood, but but you get the point. So almost to one neighborhood. Um, it might be part of a zip code or that type of thing. So you get it. Good, good. All right, well, I might have time for just one more question. We're getting up to the top of the hour. Usually, after an hour, I uh, we start to lose participation and I start to dwindle off and go into some crazy different things. So normally, we like to keep these to about an hour. So if anybody has any other last-minute questions, go ahead and put those in. Um, otherwise, we will be doing another one of these next Tuesday. I've already got that on the schedule and we're going to be talking more about 
specifics of doing headlines and and we will be talking more about neighborhood advertising and we will be talking more specifics about actually doing the advertising tonight we mostly talked about the strategy and showing you the uh what was behind the strategy for some of these things so all right guys um yes pete the recording for this will be available for the ad club exactly exactly and then and yes as well for the the political uh election postcards and for the facebook that will be available and ready um i can't promise by friday but either by the very end of this week or the very beginning of next week i want to get that in you guys' hands quite a bit before october because definitely by october 1st you need to be ready to roll with this kind of stuff and have it all prepared and outlined and ready to go so all right, guys. Well, I appreciate all of you coming on here. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you again for helping me with my book and helping me make that a bestseller. Um, plan your advertising, guys. I know sometimes talking about planning advertising isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but I can't stress enough that planning is the foundation to doing something great. You're and and if you're not planning you're planning to fail <laughs> that is that is so it's so mundane but so real so understand that plan and, and even when i talk about doing these things for these strategies it doesn't have to be 3 or 4 or 5 hours of planning it can be as little as 5 or 10 minutes of planning it can make or break some of the stuff that you're doing so all right guys thanks a lot god bless have a great rest of the night and we'll talk with you soon